In this video, you'll see how to make a magic 3D block with prints that cover the full surface of a side of a block. This is the sample that was used to make this video. And you'll see that the pictures match as closely as possible. And when you turn the fabric to the other side of the block, you have different pictures. It can be done with fabric like this, which has squares, easy to find, or something a little busier, where you have to find a picture in the middle of a, a large printed piece. It will be lots of fun to do this as well. The pattern is different than the basic block. The basic block shows you six colors. The block for printed patterns actually shows you twelve one for each face of the block. You'll see a little line underneath. That's for you to pencil in something to identify. Print one, print two, print three. In my case, print one might have been the giraffe, print two, the crabs, print three, the octopus, four, the cows, five, the ducks, and six, the whales. Then there are six different prints for the other side of the block. To really pay attention, these little triangles represent the top left corner of the piece and the left and the right for the top sections, it's really important that you keep them organized. When you look at the layout for this, it tells you print one, here's the left, here's the right. This one over here is the dark purple, so that's my print six top pieces go here, the bottom pieces go there. So it's a little trickier to follow the layout, but once you have it like that, then the sewing instructions are identical to the basic block. And I recommend you... When you're you working with prints on the block, you have to have more than one version of the print in order to get a perfect match in the center and have enough for seam allowance. So the way I do that is I take two prints, complete prints, fold one of them in half. In this case I've got a nice handy square to go by. Press it down. And then I'll fold the other half so that it matches exactly. I'm lining up this edge so it matches there. And I've got a little piece of that line I can join up to. When it's exactly right, press it down. This is the front side of my two halves. I need to go to the inside, cut away the excess. I'm going to cut approximately a quarter inch, slightly more. And on the other piece, of course, I'm cutting the other inside. Pull that back and cut this away. And then take my freezer paper. I'm going to line it up with this little yellow line. So I know I'm going to match top to bottom as well. And press along that edge. Continue to fold around. Make sure I'm tight to the paper. I've got the shiny side out. That's the waxy side. And that's what helps you press it and stick it. For whatever reason you've got something crooked, you can just remove it and use it again. And then do the same with the other piece. So on my pattern, I've written the names of my prints underneath the little pictures of each face. And so that way I know which one is going to go where. And the top corner on your pattern, you'll see, has a gray box. This is the top left corner. It has a little gray box to indicate the top of that little piece. This is important when you're going to do the layout in the next step. So you can see that everything's been sewn together now. And this is the same as the instructions for the original magic block. You're going to sew this edge, this one all the way across, 
and sew it to the inside of this one. So when you open this piece up and spread it out, you can see that there's a straight line that you can make all the way along here. Doing this one what I've done is I've twisted open one piece to get me one straight edge. I've done the same on the other side. So I actually have two edges I'm going to sew. One like this. I'm going to then flip it around. Of course it will make a tube. And sew the other one like this. The place to be really careful is where this joins up. So make sure that you tuck this one well out of the way and then start up again on the other side. Same thing here. Worst case, do this by hand, not by machine. But if you like a challenge, it's kind of fun when it works. When you finish this step, it's time to remove your paper and start pinning your foam. Looks kind of weird, I know, but believe me, it's going to be perfect block when it's finished. I started by print, pinning one foam cube under each section of my octopus and my giraffe. And these are prints one and three on my pattern. If I turn the block a little bit, you'll see I've got both halves of my cow. I can print them, pin them next, and the crab, both halves of the crab. I'll do them next. So I also put a pin in each of the ends. So that's my whale. And when I fold it in half, I can then do the duck, which is the last of the spaces on in one direction. So now you're going to rotate your block. Easiest to fold this one in half. Now let's just flip it over. You see when I flip it over, I've got a seal there. And just tuck these ends in. And I've got the other part of my turtle. I'm going to tuck that in. Tuck this in. See my panda's coming here. Yep, I'm going to tuck the panda in and make the other part of my turtle. Like that. You'll have to fiddle with it with a little bit, but everything will come together. So now you can see these the turtles and the seals done. When I open it up, I'm ready to pin these for surfaces. So flip your cube around until you come to the last surface that needs to be pinned. So you can see one direction, everything's right side up. This is my top and this is my bottom. And then I open the cube, flip it around. I find the other three, oh, sorry, the other six surfaces. And again, everything's right side up. Final step before I start to hand sew is that I replace the pins with tape. I find uh, in the hand sewing process the pins distort your edges because they push in and they also get caught on the thread so it's kind of irritating. So I change all that before I start to hand sew. So I've replaced all my pins with tape so that when I go to sew it I'm not hooking my thread on the pins. I'm also not getting any distortion. So when I go to sew it, I actually like to work on a surface so that I can hold the, the piece with one hand and hold away the thread also while I'm sewing. So I start by bringing my thread into one of the corners. My thread is nylon, extra strength. It's double with one knot at the end. That way I don't have to worry about my thread coming out of my needle when I'm pulling it through. I can just tug it as hard as I want. And I'm, you can see this, I'm holding away with one finger on the one hand. Of course I'm right-handed so I'm going from left to right, but it keeps the thread from tangling. And then when I go along, I don't get any, any tangles or any hooks on anything. Just tuck any extra seam in there and just catch 
your top and your bottom. Running along with just a running stitch, approximately an eighth of an inch. Do a couple of extra at every corner. When I get to the tape, I just remove it. Make sure that you're lined up. I'm just going to trim away this extra end. So you can see because of the double thread, I don't have to worry about my thread coming out of my needle. And it goes pretty fast. When you're doing a print like this, it's important that you don't see the stitching because otherwise it will interfere with how the print matches. When you're doing something with just solid colors, of course, it doesn't matter because sometimes you want the thread to show for some contrast. Some people have done nice embroidery. It's your choice how you want it to look. So basically this is how you make the Magic 3D block with printed fabrics. It's a challenge, but I hope you enjoy it. Please send me pictures of your finished blocks. I'd love to post them on my site. It's kidsbycarla.com. So to make one block out of a fabric that's as busy as this, and I want to make sure that my seams match, I'm going to look for patterns that repeat, make sure I have enough of them. I'm going to use these little templates just to get a view of how I think it's going to be. So if I'm going to use this little picture as one of my blocks, and it's one of my three-piece blocks, I'm going to need one of these and a left and a right top of these. So I find exactly the same layout. I'm going to make sure it starts and finishes on the same side. Then look around for another one. And of course I'm going to need the other side of this, which I'm going to actually move my piece up over the top of this corner to get this one on this side. So I'm going to mark it around the outside and then I fussy cut it right out. And there's one piece. I've marked this one and cut it as well. So now I know I have my left top and what I do is I lay this piece right over the top and remove it, the bottom one, and then I know I'm dead center and I mark and cut that one out as well. When you look at your pattern, you can see exactly how many of each that you need. So if my next pattern, for example, is going to be, oh, I don't know, let's try the elephant. I know I need both a left and a right of that elephant. Find the next one, line it up exactly the same, I'll mark that and I'll trim that out as well. This is waste the least amount of fabric. And if I do that for 12 different pictures, I may have some left over for part of another block, but it'll be one piece with a whole whack of holes in it.